we've we've always believed in the philosophy that by treating our people in the right way, um, they would want to work for us and want to do well with us. And steeped in our ethos of mutuality is about doing the right thing in the right way. So it's very um, important to us that we work in that way and we encourage people um, to work in that way and we treat people um, in that way. So like any business, we were impacted by the pandemic. Fortunately, we were able to continue trading. We were considered as a as key workers and we were considered as an important part of the UK economy and therefore to keep the banking sector in general going was very important. And our people really did um, step up um, and help us through this time. And the, one of the ways they really did that was by responding to our support of them um, by, by helping us in the areas that we needed help, by helping us with the, the various initiatives that we had to put in place. So we had to change some of the way we do business and they were really keen and helpful in wanting to do that with us, wanting to understand how they could do their jobs differently but also understanding what jobs we couldn't do anymore. So a lot of the face-to-face -face contact had to stop in our branches, for example. But a lot, a lot of those individuals who did the face-to-face -face work were really keen and willing to retrain and do other work, which they have continued to do. And it's been, that has been a real uh, testament to us that by actually committing to our people and helping them understand how important they are to us, the payback if you like um was there for all to see um, and we've been able to have a a very productive year keeping our members serviced and keeping our member needs at the forefront of what we did by ensuring that we treated our colleagues in the right way so at nationwide at, for many many years we have lived by and worked by um a number of values that we describe as pride um, and each of those letters um, has um, some, some indicators underneath that explains what we mean by each of those letters. Um, so uh, putting members first um, is the, the P in pride and so on. Um, but the, the importance of, of all of this is how we treat each other um, and embracing diversity and empowering each other is a really important part of pride and how we how we are at nationwide diversity is incredibly important to us but also so are all of the initiatives about respecting each other so it's a really important part of how we work that we are clear that we are respectful towards each other and respectful towards our teams and the way we work together but we also have another saying at Nationwide, which is about bringing your whole self to work. We should be um, brave to be ourselves in the workplace. And it takes all different sorts and types of people to make a really cohesive and diverse workforce. And we want people to feel free and free of fear of retribution or criticism to be able to come to work. However, our values are quite strong. We are anti-bullying, anti-racist, um, and we will pursue those values. And therefore we will challenge people and employees who do not support or comply with those or who act in a way that is contrary to those values. And I, I do think the future is going to be challenging for leaders who have led in, in certain ways for many years. Um, and we've worked in office environments for a long time. But Nationwide has been talking to its leaders um, across the organization for a long time about the negative impacts of presenteeism and how moving to an outputs-based measurement of people uh, or, or of the work they do rather is, is a much better way to provide an adult relationship with your workforce, an adult relationship with your team. Because actually measuring um, outputs is a much better way of getting the work done. And um, just being in the office 
doesn't necessarily mean the work is being done to the right standard um, at the right time. But some of our leaders did find it incredibly difficult when we first um, moved to remote because they were used to seeing their team, having their team all together um, and being able to manage their teams in that way, in a, in a what we could call a traditional way. And each of our leaders, and we've helped them throughout the pandemic in terms of providing toolkits, advice, guidance, um, webinars about how to manage remotely and how to get the best out of your teams. And certainly the majority of our leaders would um, wholeheartedly support the idea that understanding what work needs to be done is the most important thing. And once you understand the work that needs to be done, the time scales within which it needs to be done, actually giving people the freedom to do that work to some extent when it suits them within time frames because everything has to be delivered within certain time frames then actually you get the best out of people and measuring what they deliver rather than how long they were in the office is a much better way of getting what we all want so the organization gets the deliverables, its needs, which serves our members and individuals get to work in a way that suits them. So it feels like a win-win um, when we take that approach, but it's not always easy if you're not in constant contact with your team uh, because some people need more encouragement than others, but all that comes down to understanding your team, getting to know your team better and understanding those that need more encouragement than others, those that you can leave to work on something because you know they'll get on with it and they'll deliver, but others might need some extra encouragement. So it's understanding your teams and how to, to do that. And we've always been, um, I guess, real exponents of that at Nationwide for a long time. Understand your team, really get to know your team, and that is the way you can get them to perform best because you can then talk to them as individuals about how they are best motivated um, to achieve what needs to be achieved. And the pandemic has simply accelerated or um, shone a light um, on the possibilities that that then enables us um, in, in this regard. We do consider ourselves um, probably as being, um, role models might be too strong, I'm not suggesting we're there, but we feel that we, uh, in people and culture, we should be practicing what we preach so we should be demonstrating to the organization that we as a team are doing the things we are asking our other leaders and our other teams to do and um, so we are certainly trying to operate in a way um, that fulfills all of the initiatives that we're asking the organization to do so we are meeting as as various teams and thinking and talking about how will we work in the future what um, plans and propositions will we have in place? How do our individual team members feel? Um, and, and I've got an example in, in my team of where this has been, I think, really beneficial um, for some of our, our people. But I have a member of my team who previously worked part time and she is now considering coming back full time because she can juggle things better now. Um, because she doesn't have to rush to get in the car park at a certain time. She doesn't have to be wedded to the office between nine and five. So she can juggle her home life and now actually return to full time working, which has just been fabulous. So it's a it's a great um, revelation to her and to us. Um, so we will absolutely practice what we preach um, in people and culture. And we're trying our best to do that in terms of how we operate and how we present ourselves to the rest of the organization. And I think I've learned very much that you've already said, we've already talked about the importance of listening, but it is also the importance of talking and the importance of trust. I assume all my team come to work with good intentions to do a good job. They feel, I hope, comfortable to talk to me as I do with my leader, comfortable to talk about what works for me, what doesn't work for me, and, and also what, wor what might worry me about the new future. And we're really encouraging people to talk about it. And it all comes back to trusting your employee is there to do the right thing. They are there to do a good job. But if they don't do a good job, it is your responsibility as a leader to make sure you have that conversation with them.